Hey, welcome to Vortex Garage. And well, if you're like us, you've got a classic car and it's got a radio inside, but it only gets the AM band. That's right, this 1967 Plymouth Fury, while being pretty much stock, also has its factory radio and it is an AM only radio. That means no FM band, no eight track, no cassette deck, no record player. So when it comes to tunes, you're relegated to pretty much what's on the AM band. Now, I don't know how it is where you live, but around here, AM just isn't what it used to be. There used to be some music options on there, but now I scanned the entire band, and here's what I found. I found sports, I found politics, more politics, one music station that seems to play odd 70s B-side music, more politics, an update on Sasquatch, and sports mixed with politics. Now, when I was done hearing the update on Sasquatch, I realized there was really nothing for me to listen to on AM, especially when I was cruising. And that posed a bit of a problem. One way I solved it very easily, a lot of people do this, you just get a Bluetooth speaker, you put it up on the dash, on the seat next to you, and you can listen to your smartphone. But they don't get terribly loud, you gotta take them with you, keep them charged. They're not the best. So what are the other options? Well, we could put a new radio head unit in. And I'm not really wanting that option with this car, because like I said, it's pretty much stock, it has the original radio, and the original radio works. And I do have one of those classic restoration radios in the 82 Mustang, and frankly, it feels cheap. I'm sure there's different brands out there. Maybe they don't all feel that way, but this one, like all the buttons are plastic and the knobs are super light, and it just feels cheap and cheesy when you're using it. It just wouldn't fit the character of this car. Nothing with that original radio with the big heavy metal buttons and the big, oh, it just fits the car. So another option you can do, there's hidden receivers and amps and speakers, and you can basically put a hidden audio system in the car, and that's a great option, and that'll sound really nice too. But it wasn't what I wanted to do. What I wanted was to be able to cruise in this in a relatively stock, old classic car, top-down cruising, and hear the AM radio, and hear the music through it. Because there's something about the AM radio, and that static when you drive under an electrical line, which used to suck when you had, that's all you had. But now that it's retro, it's cool. So what do you do if you wanna stream your music through your AM radio? Well, in the past, if you had an FM radio, and they're still available today, dime a dozen, you go get yourself an FM modulator. So I started to look and see, could I get an AM modulator? It turns out they're quite hard to find. But fortunately, there's a company called ReadyRad that does make uh, AM modulators for classic vehicles. In fact, they make them for both negative ground and positive ground classic vehicles. So if you go to the ReadyRad Ready Rad website, they have a little tool you can go through, type in information on your car, walk through a little wizard, and it'll tell you the exact model of ReadyRad that you need for your vehicle. And here we have ours. This is what we're gonna install today. So this is gonna allow us to basically bring in an input source from any device and play it through our AM radio. It basically is in between the antenna connection and has a simple two wire power and ground hookup. We're also going to add a Bluetooth adapter on top of that. This is a 12 volt Bluetooth adapter. A lot of these are for marine functions. So the nice thing about it is it's completely waterproof, which uh, hopefully won't be <laughs> something we have to test, but putting it up under the dash of a convertible just in case. This is a great little unit here. This has an audio output. It'll plug right into our ReadyRad, and this will allow us to have Bluetooth connectivity completely hidden from our smartphone playing through our original factory AM radio and factory sound system on the car. So it's gonna be really awesome when we go cruising. First things up, we gotta lower the, the top on this thing. So one of the first things we're gonna to wanna to do before we do anything else and before we disconnect the battery, we wanna find our electrical source. So on our Fury, our fuse box is up under our dash to the left side of the steering wheel. So you're gonna to wanna to locate yours. We're gonna to try to use one of the existing fuses and one of the little attachments the Ready Red has. We'll show you that in a second. You could also tap into the existing wiring, but this is an older car. I'd like to avoid that if at all possible. You could also run a completely new circuit off your battery if you so desired, but don't think we're gonna to wanna to do that either. That's a lot of work and not sure we need to. So let's try to get you a view up here. So there is our fuse block and I know it's hard to see, but this one right here is our radio fuse. And I think we're gonna use that one because the theory being, if for some reason that fuse pops, 
we're going to lose our radio and we cruise in silence. No big deal. Any of these other ones, we might not want them to blow. We don't want our stop lights to, to go. We don't want our instrument panel lights. Plus, some of those are probably constant 12 volt. I would imagine our radio is not. So in our fuse block there, we're going to go ahead and tap into our radio fuse. But before we do that, I do want to verify that that is a circuit that only comes on with the key. I don't want to have full uh, power go into it all the time. Even though we have a battery disconnect and leave this car disconnected, you know, when we're out cruising, we stop somewhere. I don't want to leave a power drain on it. So we're going to use a couple cool things here from our kit. So we've got these nice little, they fit on a banana plug like that. It's a nice little pro back probe kit. These are handy on modern vehicles for back probing uh, sensors and things like that to get readings, but it can work for us here too. We've also got an alligator clip for our ground. All right, that's stuck in there and hopefully making contact. Now, if you look, we currently don't have any reading because our key is off. That's uh, this way, it's an auto scaling one. So it's actually at millivolts, this is picking up, but essentially no volts. All right, we'll go ahead and turn our key on and let's see if we have power on the circuit with key on. As you can see, we do. So 11.5, we're not running the vehicle, so it's a little low, but that's a 12 volt circuit. So we can go ahead and use that circuit as our on off. And like I said, if we end up blowing the fuse in it for some reason, all we're going to lose is our tunes. We're not going to lose our windshield wipers or our headlights or anything like that. So like all right, a couple more quick things as we move along here. We did pull the fuse out of that circuit. And first off, you want to make sure the fuse matches the circuit that you're pulling out, because sometimes people hide problems on older vehicles by putting bigger fuses in when maybe there's a higher draw for another reason. So always good time to check that. The other thing we're going to do, we've got our multimeter on still. We're going to go up and we're going to plug into the uh, fuse areas where it is and then turn the ignition on and identify which side of the fuse is the uh, hot side and which side is after the fuse. You want to tap after the fuse because well, you want your circuit to be fused. I think that kind of makes sense. All right, so if I touch my ground, I can see we've got voltage on that. So that is the inside prong. And here's the one off to the edge, the outside one. There we go, We're on it. And we'll touch our ground and no change. So this side where we're connected to up under there is where we want to put our tap because that'll be after the fuse. So if we have an electrical problem with any of these devices that short out, it'll cause the fuse to pop. If you put it on the other side, the feed before the fuse, you won't have the protection of the fuse. Now we're just going to be spending a little time under here, figuring out where to mount our ready rad, where we have access to our radio and our antenna and where we can mount it out of sight, where it'll stay cool all that good stuff. So we got some looking to do and we'll kind of come back and show you where we decided to mount it and we'll see if we need to get access behind the radio or if maybe we can get to it from behind the glove box. We'll have to figure that out. So we'll be back in a second. Oh, and now that we know where we're gonna tap in for our electrical, let's go ahead and cut off our battery. Now you can remove your negative terminal or if you're like us, you've got a disconnect already on it. We'll just spin the disconnect disconnect the electrical. Now we can work on it safely. All right, to try to get access to our radio and mainly the antenna, we've gone ahead and removed on our Fury, there are some screws that hold our inner glove box material in. And we're gonna try to carefully remove this. It's just kind of like a cardboard. So we're gonna have to be very careful as we pull that out and remove it. Hopefully our helpers don't Cause too much of a problem, right, Shark? You're gonna be good. What are you doing over there? Come here. Oh, hi, Gwen. All right. Anyway, let's see if we can pull this out carefully without damaging it. No matter what care we took, the old glove box just pretty much disintegrated as we pulled on it. Now I did pull my glove box liner out. Uh, in the end, it turned out uh, the back side of it was full of tape and 
it had been pulled out and mangled before. And I actually find, found that they're reproduced. So I'm picking up a new one. We're gonna put a brand new liner in there. In the meantime, I ripped the old one out and that gave us plenty of room to work back there. Hi. 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 Oh, whoa, what's that? What's that here? What's that here? Oh my gosh. Okay. So here is where we are at. We have made the zip tie art and a mass of like little brackets I pulled out of my scrap bin. So whenever you're trying to mount something like this, this doesn't have to hard mount necessarily. A lot of times you can just zip tie these to, to things. But I want to position this away from any heat sources, away from vibration. And uh, the way that I decided to do that was I found a uh, dash mount in the back behind the glove box off to the side. We'll show you where that is in a second. And one stud that will basically bolt this to, it went into a back bracket bin, kind of like a bolt bin, but it's got a bunch of brackets. I found all kinds of little things and bolted them together. And I've got my ready rad on the top at an angle. And we've got our Bluetooth adapter here. And I'll show you in a second where that's gonna mount in the car. Now what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna leverage that stud as a ground as well. So what I'm gonna do for that is take the ground wires I need off of our Bluetooth and this, which is kind of wrapped up, so I'm gonna unwind it, and we're gonna ground straight on here so that way we don't have to run the ground wire all the way. All we'll have to do is run our power leads. And I'm actually gonna splice in to the Ready Rad power lead because I'll double check everything out here, but our power source for our Bluetooth adapter is extremely low and uh, it shouldn't be an issue to add a little bit more like milliamps onto this line. So between the two power usages, shouldn't be a problem to do that. That's what we're gonna do. Wiring was pretty simple and is clearly laid out in the ReadyRad manual. However, for our install, we were adding a Bluetooth module, so we had to add a few steps. First, we unwound the ReadyRad's nicely twisted power and ground wires as we were going to mount the ground direct to a dash mount. We ended up combining the ground for the ReadyRad with the ground from the Bluetooth unit so they were both cut to length, twisted together, and a proper crimped and heat shrinked lug added. Then we ran a slightly larger power lead, which probably wasn't really needed, but we did have the wiring in the shop. And this was then connected with a crimped butt connector to the power leads for both the ReadyRad and the Bluetooth unit. On the other end, that goes to the fuse block, and that got a spade connector, which attaches to the fuse tap adapter that ReadyRad provided. Finally, the blue white wire from the Bluetooth unit was cut and capped. It's a 12 volt output trigger for an amp, and it wasn't gonna be needed for our setup. Then we simply connected the Bluetooth unit 3.5 millimeter output to the ReadyRad's 3.5 millimeter input and taped it up with some fabric automotive wiring tape. Of course, this all looks great, but we ended up finding two things. First, we forgot about something with our mounting solution, and that's going to cause a change to be needed. You'll see that shortly. And second, the Bluetooth unit itself is going to require a manual override to shut off, and it cannot be on the ground side. Just wait until you see why. Gwen, what you guys doing? Are you having fun? Who's a good girl? Hey, come here. What you doing? Oh, what you doing? What you got? What you got? You got a toy. So hopefully you can see there that we've used that little piece. It goes around the end of the barrel of the fuse and then has a spade connector on it. I put heat shrink around it so that it would be insulated. We got our wire connected. It's a 12 gauge wire and we have that running all the way under the dash and then it comes up through here into our glove box area where we have our ready rad and bluetooth hooked up a little bit of mess of wiring there's some extra long cables but we've kind of just zip tied everything up out of the way so when we put our glove box in our lining back in we'll have plenty of access plenty of room there <laughs> Oh no, I just realized something. But as you can see, this vent right here, I completely forgot 
that I had to take out this plastic vent because it was cracked and broken. So I removed it and took it out and then came in here, forgot about it because I got it sitting letting epoxy dry. And I mounted this up. And if you look here, this is pretty much going to interfere. So we're going to have to change our ready rad installation ever so slightly. So let's give you an idea of how well this sounds. Let's see if I can play a YouTube video through it. So let's go play our last video. Hey, welcome to the Vortex Garage. And here we are underneath our 2003 Lincoln Town Car. What we're doing under here, well, you can probably see if you look under screen right here. We've got a leaky pinion seal on our rear differential. Well, let's go into our and, Bluetooth. Uh, it's not just a seat anymore. We've got some actual fluid coming down. So it's time. we got to take care of that. So today we're going to show you how to do that, and we're going to do it a little bit differently than some of the other videos you might find on YouTube. Who's that so helper? Most of the videos on YouTube Who's call a big for helper? counting the number of threads on the pinion nut when you remove it. Awesome. So it works really good. Um, pretty excited about that. All right, so we did reposition our ready rad because we had forgotten all about this vent plenum that I had to epoxy the end. It was broken and just sort of flopping around in there. And uh, I had it out on the bench, totally forgot about it. Was working in here, didn't quite notice what was above. And if you kind of look, oh look, that's where the vent goes. So I did move the ready rad. That was the only piece that was uh, in our way. And I just basically moved it off to the side and attached it to the metal bracket on the side, kind of next to the radio. And it's actually a really good spot. It's in the open, it's away from heat sources, and there's plenty of room for our plenum, plenty of room for our glove box and our liner. But Ready Rad is in there. I did add one additional thing before we put the, uh, the plenum back in. I added that little switch right there. And the reason I added that switch, it's kind of hidden. That's just a ground interrupt switch. It's gonna cut the ground to our Bluetooth unit. And uh, the reason I did that is the way the Ready Rad works is it actually detects an incoming signal, an incoming like preamp signal, and it'll bypass the, uh, the AM antenna and take over the signals and broadcast on a thousand kilohertz. Well, what it supposedly does is after about 60 seconds when it doesn't detect a signal, it'll switch back to the antenna. So if you ever do want to tune in and hear your updates on Sasquatch or listen to politics, well, if you've got one of these, what I was finding is it was never handing the uh, ready rad, the ready rad was never handing back over the antenna. And the reason for that, that Bluetooth adapter actually gives out a pretty solid amount of preamp through its output, regardless of if it's paired to your phone, it's always on. So even if there's no audio playing, there's still a signal going, and I'm pretty sure that's keeping the ready rad from switching. Now, most of the time, I don't really care. I only want to listen to the stuff on my phone. There's not much on AM radio, but in the case that I ever want to, I can come down to my switch here, which is nice and hidden. And I just flip that switch and it'll cut the ground and basically turn off the Bluetooth unit, turn it back on. And that's completely hidden under the dash. You don't see it. And it's, of course, you could tell just sort of zip tight in there. I did not want to drill into the dash. I didn't want to add switches. I wanted something temporary that's easy to remove, but hidden. And that's why it's there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get our plenum reinstalled. And then we'll go ahead and give our ready rat a test and make sure that it still works, especially with the addition of that switch down there. So I think our switch is uh, gonna have to be rethought. Not that I need more work to do, but somehow when I turn off my switch, all I get is noise. And I think I know what's happening. It's actually not disconnecting the Bluetooth. It's still powering our little Bluetooth unit there. And it's probably using such little power I'll bet you I know exactly what's going on. I'll bet you it's grounding out through the audio connection. So it's very strange that my little ground switch didn't turn off the Bluetooth and my only guess, and I didn't even think about this and you can hear the noise in the uh, system now. My best guess is that with that switch off, it actually grounds through the audio connection to the ReadyRad and then uses the ReadyRad ground. So to 
find out. I'm going to disconnect the audio. All right, and I'm still connected to Bluetooth, but let me turn off the, uh, the ground switch now. And that did it. That turned off my Bluetooth. Bub 2 is turned off. I'm going to reach under my dash, turn my switch back on. Bub 2 connecting. All right, so now watch if I take this. So this is coming right off of the uh, Bluetooth. If I plug this back in, You'll see I've got my VUB2, and I turn it off. Find my switch, hang on. So I turn it off. See, it's so hidden I can't even find it. All right. I turn it off, and still connected. It's still connected. All right. Still connected. Now watch. Disconnected. Now wait a second or two. There it goes. Took it a little bit to rescan and for the phone to realize because I wasn't actively playing. But there it goes and shuts off. So once we finally established that the switch on the ground side was the problem, all we really had to do was switch it over to the 12 volt side. Let's check in with what we did. What I did uh, is I just converted those wires to use the 12 volt. So now I do have 12 volt running through there, but it's super low amperage. Um, so we're fine in terms of what the switch can run. And uh, well, let's give this thing a test and see if it works. So good news is we've got everything back here. Our uh, hose is in place when we get our new uh, glove box, it'll fit in. So let's go ahead and, and try this out. We got the battery hooked up. Sorry, I had to adjust the volume on the phone. All right, it works great. So let's say we're done. Oh, actually, let's go ahead and keep playing it. Sorry, keep playing it. Reach under here and flip our switch. And that cuts our Bluetooth. And if we go back to our phone, there we go. So if we go to the phone, see it's no longer connected. And our radio should go back to terrestrial mode. There it goes. There we go. All right. So I can't play too much of that because of YouTube, but there we got our AM back. So if we go ahead and turn this back on, like I said, we're not going to do that very often because for the most part, I'm not too interested in listening to terrestrial AM around here. We're already back connected for audio. So let's start playing our song. There it is. Just like that. Auto picked it back up. And of course, our new glove box liner did come in. It looks way better than the old one, and it certainly holds our cheap sunglasses pretty well. All right, so I think we're pretty much at a stopping point for our video because we've got our ReadyRad installed, we've been able to test it out, and we see that it's working. And really the purpose of this video was to show you an option for getting modern audio onto your actual AM radio by using an AM modulator from ReadyRad. So pretty cool piece of kit. And uh, sure, we talked about other options. You could swap the radio out, you could do a whole hidden system, but I'm gonna be real excited to drive this thing with the sound from the old speakers, the sound from the AM radio, but actually having some cool music to play while I cruise. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you're looking for something like this for your classic car, definitely check out the ReadyRad. We'll post a link to their website and we'll also post uh, links to any tools that we used as well as the Bluetooth adapter that we put in. So if you're looking to do this on yours, just check that description out. You'll find everything that you need. 
Well, again, that's it. If you enjoyed this, drop us a like, subscribe, hit the bell, all those things everyone tells you to do. But it is helpful because it helps our content get out there. And we'll definitely have more content on this and other cars here on Vortex Garage.